One thing I've loved doing on this channel for the last two years or so has been looking back at the trade histories of NHL GMs. While it's just one aspect of a GM success in the NHL, it can tell one hell of a story. Some trades, hey, face value can tell you all you need to know. Others, well, it's a reason why Steve Dangle has trade tree videos. I have a long list of GMs I've yet to cover on that series, but often I'll cover who my audience would rather see at that time. But at the top of my personal list, though, is Pierre Lacroix. And it's a shame that I didn't get to talk about how great he was before his passing this weekend. I hate the timing of this, as some could take it as pandering or trying to capitalize uh, on his death, but... I have to make this video. I was born at the right time to grow up watching the incredible teams that he put together and actually enjoy them, and I feel like the least I can do is talk about the personal joy his teams brought to my life, because this is not the first passing in the hockey world uh, that's hit me kind of hard this year. I tried to make a video about Travis Roy uh, when he passed away a couple months ago, and I physically couldn't do it. So I'm pushing myself here to make this video. Let's talk about the late, great Pierre Lacroix. While this will be a painful start to the story for any older Nordiques fans, Lacroix became the president and GM of the Quebec Nordiques in 1994, just a few months after I was born. And as a former player agent with no GM, coaching, or even NHL playing experience, needless to say, the odds were against him, despite his stellar reputation as an agent. And then you follow that up with the fact that, of course, they moved to Colorado just a year later. It was a tumultuous start. The Nords didn't even make the playoffs the season prior to Lacroix taking over the team, despite having the likes of Joe Sackick, Matt Sundin, Owen Nolan, and Adam Foote on the squad. His first year at the helm, the team changed just a little bit, though, seeing Matt Sundin moved out, but seeing the likes of Uwe Krupp, Wendell Clark, and some guy named Peter Forsberg joining the team, they would make the playoffs that season, although they lost in the first round. Then, the move to Colorado happened, and the wheeling and dealing began. Wendell Clark? He was traded to the Islanders for Claude Lemieux. Owen Nolan? Dealt to the Sharks for defenseman Sandus Ogilinch. And then the big one, December 6th of 1995, Andre Kovalenko, Martin Ruchinski, and Jocelyn Thibault dealt to the Montreal Canadiens for Mike Keane and some guy named Patrick Waugh. Who? I got my two Stanley Cup rings plug in my ear. Within the back half of 1995 alone, the missing pieces were put into place, and in June of 96, the Avalanche would win the Cup in their first season in Colorado, of course, over the Florida Panthers in the Year of the Rat. The following season, they'd fall short of a repeat, losing to the Detroit Red Wings, ironically, in the conference final en route to that team, of course, going back to back. But that summer, another decisive turning point in the history of the Colorado Avalanche took place as Joe Sackick signed a three-year, $21 million offer sheet with the New York Rangers as an RFA. And in one of the more interesting stories of all time, the Avs, who seem short on money due to large amounts committed to the likes of Peter Forsberg and Patrick Waugh, found the funding to match the offer and keep Joe Sackick thanks to Air Force One. The owners of the Avalanche, ComSat, a telecommunications company, produced the summer blockbuster and the profits led to them making the deal and subsequently the contract standards across the league rose thanks to Air Force One. Later on that season, another big trade occurred as the Avs sent Mike Ricci and a second round pick to the Sharks, another deal with San Jose, in exchange for forward Sean Donovan and a 1998 first rounder that became the 12th overall pick. Alex Tangay. That postseason, however, the Avs would fall short one more time, this time losing in the quarterfinal. The 98-99 season saw the additions of players such as Greg DeVries, Theo Fleury, and Dale Hunter via trade, as well as rookies from the 94 draft, Chris Drury and Milan Hayduk joining the team. However, they yet again fell short in the conference final. The team would lose again in the conference final in the 99-2000 season, but not before other foundation-laying moves happened. November 3rd of 1999, the Avs traded a key piece to that 96 puzzle in Claude Lemieux to the New Jersey Devils for Brian Ralston. Lemieux would go on to win the Cup that season in New Jersey and Colorado. Well, they would trade Ralston before the end of this same season. They sent him to Boston alongside a 2000 first-round pick, Sammy Paulson and Martin Grenier, in exchange 
for Dave Andrichuk and Raymond Bork. This is, of course, where six-year-old me really began to pay attention. At six, you know who the stars are. I knew Joe Sackick, Peter Forsberg, and Patrick Waugh. But at six, you also know about the stars of your favorite team. And really, they're more than stars. They're your favorites. And for me, I never had a choice when it came to who my favorite player would be. It was Ray Bork, my dad's favorite player, a Boston sports icon by the time I was born. He was hockey to six-year-old me. And now, he was off to Colorado. And so Colorado became my second team, and they still are to this day. And that brings us to the 2000-2001 season, where it all came together for Pierre Lacroix and the Avs once more. But not before two more key trades, because this man was a wizard. That's the point of this video. This man was a wizard. June 24th of 2000, Sandus Ozelens was moved to Carolina, and while they couldn't exactly find that key replacement instantly, they eventually did. Matter of fact, they had to wait until February of 01. On February 21st, Adam Deadmarsh, one of my all-time favorites, Aaron Miller, a 2001 first-rounder that became future Leafs great David Steckel, and a 2003 first-rounder that became Brian Boyle, all of that was sent to the LA Kings in exchange for Steven Reinprecht and the master of the hip check, Rob Blake. And so, the puzzle was complete. And that June, a dream would come true. Say what you want about some of the pieces that Lacroix may have inherited, but it takes talent to not waste it, and he never wasted it. Colorado never missed the playoffs while Lacroix was team GM. That was from 1994 until he stepped down in May of 06. Of course, he'd stay on with the team as team president until May of 2013. Despite not making it back to the cup finals in those four seasons I talked about, the team did what they could to stay competitive, and he was never afraid to shuffle the deck, including the trade that sent Drury and Stefan Yell to Calgary in October of 02, or bringing in Tamu Solani and Paul Correa for the 03-04 season, which, by the way, there is a documentary that can be watched right here on YouTube from ESPN The Season about this particular time. It's a fascinating behind-the-scenes look. Just search Colorado 0304. End of the day, nine straight division titles, six conference finals appearances, two Stanley Cups. The Colorado Avalanche might not exist today if it wasn't for Lacroix being the right man at the right time. He was one of the all-time greats, and I'm reminded of this in lieu of his passing, and it's a thought that I've had a lot over the years I'm so thankful to be born when I was. I've gotten to experience so much, not just in terms of sports, of course, but especially when talking about sports, even with just hockey, from the time that I've been able to vividly remember events, I've seen so many of those moments of those players that I'll get to talk about having lived to see. Just like my dad got to or my grandfather, you know, with my dad, it's, oh, you should have seen this player in his prime. Well, I've gotten to see players like that. I've gotten to see special teams like that. And, of course, incredibly special moments. And Pierre Lacroix was the architect of some of those unforgettable teams. The architect of that one moment that, to this day, brings a tear <laughs> to my eye. I don't know if I'd be as big of a hockey fan as I am if it wasn't for the magic that Pierre Lacroix had. The talent that he had to put together hockey teams. Simply incredible. So thank you, Pierre. And so long.